guys. In the last couple of weeks, I've had a lot of people reaching out to me and asking me if I will start writing down my recipes of all the yummy pictures I post of food that I make on Instagram and Facebook. They've been asking me to write down my recipes and share. I've also had people asking me if I'd consider teaching cooking classes. And then I've also had people asking me if I'd consider writing a cookbook. And if not write a cookbook, at least write down all my recipes and distribute them. <laughs> Now that all just sounds like a lot of work and a lot of time. So as I've been thinking about it, I just had this idea the other day that I would start making these short videos of just showing you what it is I'm doing. So whatever I posted that week on Instagram or on Facebook, I'll put that in my next video and talk about it. So if I've made a recipe, I'll share it in the video. I'll talk about it in the video. I'll share some tips and ideas, but basically I'll just take you around my house. <laughs> What's funny about that is our family vlog is actually called Around the House. About 10 years ago, my husband and I had this idea that we would put in for a local TV show. This was like our dream and we would call it around the house and he would show easy DIY projects, how to fix up things yourself, and then I would share all my food ideas and things that I've been doing around my house. My husband does a lot of indoor and outdoor projects on the side and so people will always ask him, how did you do that? Will you come do that at my house? Will you show me how to do that? So we had come up with that idea. But of course, life got busy and that never happened. <laughs> so the idea just came up again the other day to start doing these short videos to share with you the things that we're doing around the house. So anyways, I hope you enjoy. So at the beginning of this new year, we made some goals as a family and we decided not only are we going to try to be more organized, but we're going to try to make healthier choices. So that's what inspired today's video. In our church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they have started this awesome new program for the children and youth. And in this new youth program, they have this little wheel right here with four areas where you set a goal in each of these areas, spiritual, social, physical, and intellectual. You set a goal in each of these areas and you center those goals around the Savior so you can draw closer to Him. And so we each set our goals and for physical, we decided we were gonna start eating healthier and taking better care of our bodies. And my sister and I were just talking on the phone just now. <laughs> we were talking about this and she said, you know, Something that people don't think about is that taking care of your body and feeling good physically goes hand in hand with feeling good spiritually. Because when you're eating junk all the time and you're not exercising, you often feel pretty crappy. And if you're feeling pretty crappy all the time, how does that affect your ability to feel the spirit and to feel God's love for you? So I often find when I'm taking care of my body and I'm feeling good physically, I treat the people I care about better. I'm more hopeful, more optimistic, which helps build my faith. And I can think more clearly, which helps me better discern the thoughts that are coming in and out of my mind all day, which thoughts are from the Lord and which thoughts are from the adversary. So just something to think about. Now the only reason my house is kind of clean today is because I had people over this morning. So I had to stay up late last night putting things away and straightening it so that it would be decent by this morning. But as you can see, we're planning my son's Eagle Court of Honor. It's this Saturday. So we've been meeting and discussing things, getting that all planned out. So it's been a busy week. But anyways, I want to show you what I have going on in the fridge this week. So I've had a lot of people reach out to me in the last 24 hours because I posted some pictures of some ideas that I've been working on for my own healthy eating and they've asked me to share more. So I'm going to start by just sharing with you my fridge. This was my Christmas present this year. I got to pick out a new fridge. <laughs> so. If you saw my old fridge, you would understand why. The drawers on the inside were falling apart, the vegetable and the fruit drawers were broken, so we couldn't even use them, so we weren't buying as much produce because we had nowhere to store it. <laughs> so anyways, check this out. All right, so up here I have the breads for the kids, my husband, their favorite kinds of breads. And then I just started buying gluten-free bread to try it out. I like to always try new things, and if I like it, then I implement it. So I bought this loaf of bread and I decided I don't want to eat more than two to three slices a week because I really try to cut bread out of my diet. So I'll put a few slices in a Ziploc bag. Everybody knows that's mine. Don't touch it. 
And then the rest of it I keep down in the bottom of the freezer. So this is a bread that I found. It's called Canyon Bakehouse. I actually just found this at Walmart and it's really tasty. I actually really like it. Anyways, my old fridge, you guys, my old lifestyle, everything was filled with condiments. So we just had shelves and shelves in the doors from top to bottom, just filled with all kinds of dipping sauces and salad dressings because I love flavor. I love condiments. I hate it when food is dry. I like my food to be colorful, so I'm a big condiment person. And that's what's gotten me into trouble. So this time I condensed it all down to one shelf. And not all of this is condiments. I have chicken stock in the back. I have some probiotic drinks. And then I have low sodium soy sauce, things like that. And then on the top here, I've got all of our jams and jellies, almond milk, half and half, a little bit of whipping cream. Oh, it's beeping. That means it's been open too long. <laughs> so something you should know about me is that I hate following specific programs. <laughs> so whenever there's something that has so many rules, you have to do something an exact certain way. Those are never my favorite things to do. And that goes clear back to junior high even. I remember I took a creative writing class because I love to write. And back then I wrote stories and poetry. And so I thought that would be an easy A. And I remember my creative writing teacher had a certain style that he preferred. And if you didn't write that way, you never got an A. So I ended up getting C's in a subject that was usually something I really enjoyed. Then it was the same way with art. I remember in seventh grade I took an art class. It's because I enjoyed art. I enjoyed drawing and creating things. And I remember the teacher would say, hey, here's an artwork piece we're gonna mimic. We're gonna learn about this type of style and this type of paint and you've gotta paint it just like this. And if you didn't do it just like that, you didn't get an A. <laughs> Anyways, let's just say I never got an A in that class. And so it kind of ruined art for me and also creative writing for me. And so as I got older and I found things that I really enjoyed, like creating food, it was no different. Let me show you. I have a whole pantry filled with cookbooks and we even just condensed this. These are my cookbooks and magazines, recipes from over the years. And if you ask my kids, they'll tell you that I never pull them out because I love to create. So all my ideas come from up here. And if I see something, if I'm inspired by a recipe that I see on TV or in a magazine, it instantly comes to mind how to make that. So I'll just go home and I'll make it. <laughs> so, and I never write anything down. I don't have anything for my kids. So that's why I try to teach them in the kitchen how to make things so they can always remember, but I never write anything down. <laughs> so I used to do a food blog for that reason so I could write things down so that when people asked me for the recipe, I could just send them a link to my blog. But that was just too time consuming. So maybe me at least explaining it in a video <laughs> will be the next best solution. And I'm a type of person who believes in moderation. So I believe in doing all things in moderation. So I try not to ever cut something completely out of my life. There's some very wise counsel in my patriarchal blessing. And it says in there, do all things in moderation and never go to extreme in any area of your life. So I've been taking that lately into consideration with my food. And as I said before, when things start to involve a lot of rules and you can't do all these things and you can only do these things and only buy these certain things from these certain places and these certain stores and having these huge checklists of avoiding all these things that you don't want in your food, that can be really overwhelming. And for me, that can take the joy out of cooking and creating and shopping for the food. Now the grocery stores that I have to choose from where I live, I've got a Walmart just a couple miles up the road, East of me and then a Walmart just a few miles down the road west of me so they're about equal distance from my home so I've got the two Walmarts and then I have a Smith's grocery store in between all the other stores like Harmon's I have to travel at least 20 minutes to get there so when I'm in a hurry and I have to grab something quick those are my go-to stores once in a while when I have time or if it's on the way I'll venture off to Harmon's or I'll go to some other grocery stores in another direction but they're more out of the way from my home. I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of time in my schedule. Between all the other things that I do and church and being a mom of four kids, I have a lot on my plate all the time. So I'm all about what's easy and simple. If it's too complicated, it's not gonna happen. And I've never been one to follow trendy diets. I always like to do my own thing. And that's just my personality. I love to create. I love to do my own thing. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I know what works for me. I know what my body likes. I know what it doesn't like. So I've never been a fan of those diets 
where you buy pre-made food and it comes in and it's already there. You just have to put it in your fridge. <laughs> but I know that works for a lot of people. I know a lot of people like to do that, but I don't like to do that. I like to create my own food. And because I don't go to extremes, once in a while, I'm gonna have some chips. And I'm going to have some ice cream. If I go to a family party or I go out to dinner, I'm gonna try something different on the menu. And that's okay. But throughout the week, if I can make better choices, then I don't feel so bad. The consequences aren't so terrible. When I want to eat some of those things, it's not gonna be so bad. So I created a snack list for my kids and on a day when they're all home, like a Saturday, you know, they'll have their breakfast in the morning, but then at snack time, they can pick a protein and a fruit or a vegetable. And then same thing between two and 4 p.m., they have a protein or a fruit and a vegetable. And then between seven and 8 p.m., they get a protein shake made by me. <laughs> And I have a bunch of options on here. Chocolate banana, chocolate peanut butter, vanilla, berry, mango. And I just change it up all the time to keep it fun so it's never boring. But let me show you, in my pantry, we try different brands all the time, but I just buy these big containers of vanilla protein powder and then also chocolate. And it's just the wee protein. And I have found that when my kids have that before they go to bed, then they're not wanting late night snacks, they're not hungry all the time, and they sleep better. They're not as irritable the next day. So that's also a great way to throw in some fruit or any other healthy things you wanna sneak in there. <laughs> But anyways, I make them thick and frosty. I've never been a fan of those protein shakes that come in the can and they're liquid. Those don't fill you up. These satisfy and really fill you up and it feels like you're eating a tasty dessert. So my kids love it. So I sort of follow this snack schedule too, but I'll explain that in a minute. So I have protein balls, yogurt and granola, cheese, crab sticks and cocktail sauce, cream cheese on toast, nuts, boiled egg, Nuts spread on rice cakes, hummus and crackers, onion dip and crackers, half an avocado on toast, half a cup of cottage cheese, orange, apple, half a banana, applesauce, bottled fruit from our storage room. And what I love about that is that's fruit we have grown in our yard. We need to start using that up. Carrots, peppers, celery sticks, cucumber slices, tomatoes, pea pods. And then I tell the kids to get creative and mix and match these snacks. So for example, I tell them instead of doing lettuce and tomatoes, you know, a little salad, you could have a green salad on the side, but take your tomatoes and put them on your toast with your cream cheese. That way you get your protein and your salad, but you're changing it up every time so it's never the same. So I have different kinds of applesauces. All right, so way in the back, we have our unsweetened applesauce. Then we have canned apples from our apple tree in the backyard, and then I buy these fun little apple sauces once in a while, not all the time, but they have mixed berries in them, so it's kind of fun, and there's no added sugar. And then we like to change up different brands of Greek yogurts. We'll buy different kinds. They can have that as their protein. Over here, I've got the salsas. I've got lots of different smoked salsas, green salsas, mango salsas. What I love about salsa is you can put it over avocados, you can put it over eggs, you can put it over chicken. There's so many things you can do with salsa that are so satisfying. We can still limit your calories and eat healthy, but have a lot of flavor in your food. I'm all about flavor. It's gotta taste good. <laughs> Over here we've got cottage cheese, we've got our hummus. We always change out the brands, we get different kinds of sour cream. My son picked out these flavors of cream cheese, so once in a while we'll get a few different things and try them out. I love this yogurt. That yogurt is the basis for all my dipping sauces, so I love it. If I wanna make a dill dip, an onion dip, a ranch, I always use that Greek yogurt as my base. I even have this really yummy sauce that I make that's the Greek yogurt, garlic, salt, a little bit of lemon juice. I'll change it up all the time, but I'll put it in a squeeze bottle and I'll squirt it over pizza. Now lately I've been eating a different kind of pizza and I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so in the bottom of the fridge, we have our freezer. These are all the herbs from the garden. So these are all my herbs that I picked last summer. And then we just have some other things. This is where we keep all of the frozen fruit. We did buy some cookie dough from a fundraiser to help out some high school kids. It's time to go shopping again for vegetables, but I like to buy these and use these instead of pasta noodles. So there's the butternut squash, zucchini. So these are a lot of fun. I love frozen peas. I love those on salads. Chopped spinach. We usually have frozen asparagus, kale, and Brussels sprouts. Now when you hear Brussels sprouts, you might think, yuck. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, the way that I make them, my kids love them. 
So I just put them in the oven, I broil them, and I drizzle a little bit of balsamic vinegar, olive oil, sea salt, that's all you need. They are so good. And then on this side is the meat. We have the chicken, we have, we have salmon, roast. We use a lot of ground turkey. And then of course, I love making homemade ice cream. So I always keep this in here so it stays cold and frozen. Okay, so I like to change up different waters. Right now I'm doing cucumber water. And that's just because my kids get bored with water. And if they get bored, they're gonna go looking for other kinds of drinks. My husband is really big into drinks, so he has a drink fridge downstairs and they'll go sneak into that. <laughs> so I like to always have a, a pitcher of chilled flavored water. So they love this cucumber water. It's surprisingly really delicious. I'll change it up and I'll do lemon water, orange water, I'll put sliced oranges in there, I'll put berries in there, or I'll do mint. But either way, if it's flavored, they love it even more. Here's my pickles that I made. I just bought a whole giant bag of these pickling cucumbers at Walmart. I sliced up some onions, I put in some garlics, um, Redmond salt, cracked pepper, dill, just some dried dill and I let that marinate for about 24 hours. I also use my pickling spice, and the kids love that. This is just such a healthy, crunchy, juicy, satisfying snack. And if you're ever in between snack periods and you're, you just feel like you just need something, you can snack on one of these pickles and not feel bad about it one bit. So I'll buy all this food on the weekend and then I'll take like a Saturday morning and just prep all the food and stock the fridge so we have snacks for the whole week. Because I found that when the fridge is stocked with all kinds of choices and options, then it makes healthy eating so much easier. In the past, if I was in a hurry or I was running late and I wanted to grab a healthy snack, but I had to take the time to pull something out of the vegetable drawer, rinse it off, slice it up on a chopping board, <laughs> and then make a dip to go with it. It just wasn't gonna happen. So this way, if I'm in a hurry and I've gotta be out the door, I can just reach into the fridge, grab a couple things on this list, and take it on the go. Same with the kids. When the food's already prepared, you're going to be successful. Okay, in the back I keep my salad, I keep a container of sliced up limes and lemons, just for fun. This is where we keep any leftovers on this side. And then over here, I do have some barbecue sauces. I have anything pickled. So I have jalapenos and peppers, pickles. I also like to pickle eggs. It's just another fun way to eat boiled eggs. You should try it. And then back here, I have some mayo. Down here, I've got my fruits. I absolutely love these apples. Look how tiny they are. Oh my goodness, they're super cute. These are the tiniest little things ever. I bought these at Walmart, you guys, and they're so delicious. And my husband told me last night, he said, I never eat apples because I feel like one apple is too much and then I just throw it away and waste it. But these are the perfect size because this is how much I want to eat. I'm the same way. When I go to eat an apple, I only eat half an apple because I feel like one whole apple is just too much for me. So these are perfect. I always have citrus on hand. I always have oranges, grapefruits, and lemons, and limes. And over here, we've got cabbage, tomatoes, celery, cucumbers, onions. I like to buy different kinds of carrots to change it up and make it fun. So down here, I've got my carrot chips. These are fun for the kids to dip. That's another tip of mine. It's all about presentation sometimes. If you're just eating cucumbers all throughout the week, that can get boring. But if you cut up your cucumbers different every time, sometimes I'll chop them up and make a chopped cucumber salad. I love this little gadget. I think I once got it from a Pampered Chef party years ago. But this just gives it that crinkle cut. So I like to cut my cucumbers and my carrots and anything crinkle cut. It just for some reason, I don't know if it's a trick of the mind, but when food looks fun to eat, when it looks beautiful, you're more excited to eat it and it's almost like it tastes better. At least it feels that way. Okay, this is my snack drawer. I'm so excited. My new fridge has a pantry drawer. So in here are all the after school snacks that are on the fridge. Well, most of them. So we've got cheese sticks and then we've got you know, cheese blocks, where we keep our lunch meat, we've got the carrots. This is a really delicious dipping sauce that I made the other day. We've got our pea pods, cucumbers, hard boiled eggs, and um, 
My daughter absolutely loves crab sticks, so once in a while I'll buy those. And she makes a little cocktail with a lemon wedge and some cocktail sauce on some lettuce. Over here I keep the butter, the cheeses. But I want to tell you something about these. These are amazing. <laughs> So these protein balls, you guys, are such a lifesaver on so many days. I'll have the recipe down below in the video description. So underneath the YouTube video, if you just click on the little drop down part, there's a little arrow or it will say see more. You can read the description of this video. The recipes will be in there. But what I love about these protein balls is they're so easy to make and they're so satisfying. These will curb hunger pains in just a couple of seconds. So I have two kinds that I make. My daughter Paisley hates peanut butter, so I do almond butter for her, and I do the almond butter for me as well. And then I do peanut butter for the other kids, but I buy the all natural peanut butter. But you can change it up. You can use cashew butter or any other kind of nut that you like. I just take a big old bowl of peanut butter or almond butter, and then I throw in raisins, shredded coconut, granola, raw honey, cinnamon. Last week I changed it up and I put some pumpkin pie spice in there. Oh, it was so good. And then chocolate chips. And you just mix all that together and then you lay out a sheet of parchment paper and you just drop spoonfuls onto the parchment paper, put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes so it hardens. And then you just get out plastic wrap and wrap each ball individually and put it in the fridge. And then on those days when you're off schedule or you're starving and you just need something really quick, grab one of those and it will hold you over for a couple hours. We love the protein balls. And the almond butter ones that I made this week taste like speculose. Mmm, yummy. It tastes like that crushed up cookie butter. So good. Paisley even said it tastes like graham crackers. Over here we've got some hot sauces. I love liquid smoke when I'm barbecuing hot sauces. Something about having fresh ginger. I have fresh ginger and fresh garlic. Fresh is always so much better and it just adds a little bit of zip to all of my dishes. So I'm a big fan of fresh ginger and fresh garlic. These are fun. You can get these at World Market. Different vinegars, some more flavored oil. And then down here is garlic and the horseradish and all of that fun stuff. Love my balsamic glaze. That's definitely a must. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here is our pantry. It's just kind of tucked away back here. It's kind of hidden. We just organized it this last weekend and we're not finished yet. And let me just tell you, <laughs> I went to Walmart and just grabbed the Better Homes and Garden storage containers. I like them because they stack and they have these really nice seals on them so your food stays fresh, so your food doesn't get stale. However, after we organized our pantry and filled all these containers, Manuel found this deal on Amazon for just $89.99. You can get this 52-piece food storage set that comes with the labels. So. Maybe next time. We had some candy canes left over from Christmas, but that's not gonna stay forever. Um, anyways, but we're gonna fill these with some new snacks that we're gonna pick out this week. And we put the cereals up here. See, in the past, the cereals were all down here, and the kids were constantly picking in them, and I would find a trail of cereal all over the floor. I'd have to sweep twice a day. And then I felt like my kids were just constantly munching on cereal, which wasn't so good for them. So my husband put this cereal up high and the other day my kids said, Mom, we haven't been eating as much cereal lately because it's up so high. <laughs> um, anyways, we have all the baking stuff, the canned items. Back here I've got my spices. So when I run out in the cabinet, we'll just come back here and replace it. This is how I know what I'm low on and what I need to buy. Condiments and flour and sugar up there. And everything glass down here. You know, we live in Utah. If there's ever an earthquake. <laughs> It's gonna stay, right? It's not gonna come crashing off the, the top shelf. We're not gonna have too much of a disaster in here. <laughs> Anyways, down here, these are my healthy snacks. I've got some kale chips, some plant proteins. For on days when I really want a cracker, these are pretty tasty. Got my rice cakes, my V8 juice, beans and pastas. And I've been trying the gluten-free pastas lately and those are pretty tasty. And then way up high on the very top shelf, everyone has their own basket. And this is where we put treats. So if they got treats for birthdays or the holidays, they put them up there and they get to have candy from their baskets once in a while. They're not always full 
but we just had Christmas, so we've got some treats in there. So once a day, they get to pick out of their treat basket and have some candy. But the other time, they're eating snacks from our list on the fridge, and it's been working. It's been so awesome. Okay, so I just wanna show you my spice cabinet. This is where all the magic happens. So this is an absolute necessity. This is a must have. I use real salt from the Redmond Salt Mines in Redmond, Utah. This is the best salt I have ever tasted in my life. It is so good for you. It's pure, straight out of the earth. It hasn't been refined and doesn't have any chemicals added to it, so it actually tastes really good. And what I really love about it is that it's not so salty. So sometimes if I put just a little bit too much salt in my food, if I was using the normal table salt, um, it destroys everything. I have to start all over. If I use the same amount of Redmond salt, it's not as salty. There's just something about this that I never mess up any recipes. It's more full of flavor than it is sodium. At least that's what it tastes like. I'm big on herbs. So as you can see, I have a lot of herbs and seeds and things that are crushed. Absolutely love that. I use a lot of basil, dill, oregano. I love tarragon, coriander, cilantro. And then over here, the ones that I always use, of course, is my garlic and my onion powder. I'm constantly putting garlic and onion powder in something. <laughs> Throughout the week, I'll use turmeric, paprika. I have different kinds of paprikas. I love ginger. I'll put ginger in a lot of things. Cumin, chili powder, I love to add that. I'll put that in meats and dips and sometimes vinaigrettes. And my favorite way to sweeten food, especially meats, like if I'm making a spaghetti sauce, if I don't really wanna put sugar in it or a lot of sugar, cause that's always my secret to amazing chili and spaghetti sauce and sloppy joe mix, is adding a little bit of sugar, usually brown sugar. But if you don't wanna add sugar and you still want a little bit of a sweetness to your sauce or your meat, that's what I love about cinnamon, which is why I have a huge mega bottle of cinnamon because it's so good on everything. I mean, even if you just wanna keep it super healthy, you can put it on baked apples. That's definitely a fast, easy go-to snack. I put it in my protein balls. See, I think a lot of time when we think of cinnamon, we think of something sweet or something that has to be a dessert, but I put it in my meats, I put it in my sauces. What I love to do with food is be creative. I like to mix and match things that you normally wouldn't think of, and usually that results in my favorite recipes. So when it comes to cooking, you have to be bold, you have to be courageous, take a little bit of a risk. I'd say about 99% of the risks I have taken with cooking have always been a success. I've never regretted it. This is what I like to put in my homemade pickles that I just keep in the fridge. I've got some Cajun spice, some ground Parmesan, olive oil. I have lots of different flavored oils. My favorite that I get at World Market is truffle oil. I love, love, love truffle oil, but you can get garlic oil, you can get basil oil. In Utah, we have a few oil shops. I have one not too far from my house where it's just filled with all kinds of flavored oils. Flavored oils make recipes fun and delicious. I have a lot of flavored vinegars. So I'll do like red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. I have mango vinegar, coconut vinegar, fig balsamic vinegar, pomegranate balsamic vinegar, balsamic glazes. I have a lot of fun with vinegars. And then of course I have all my extracts. I've got vanilla. I love this here, this vanilla powder. This is one of my favorites because if I want to put it in a whipping cream or something like that, it's not going to turn it yellow or brown like it would with a brown extract. So I like to use this powder. But of course I love my mango. Mexican vanilla. I also use vanilla bean paste. I love coconut extract, orange extract, almond extract, and my favorite, my absolute favorite from this last month is anise. Love that. I put that in my holiday ciders. So delicious. And I bought these three-tiered spice organizers at Walmart. They're really inexpensive and you can also find them on Amazon. Anyways, so this is what I'm having for lunch today. Sometimes there's days when I feel like I just really want some bread, right? But bread is my enemy. <laughs> bread in my family, for the women in my family, and probably the men, whenever I eat bread, later that day someone will usually ask me if I'm having a boy or a girl. <laughs> so that's what bread does to my body. 
So I tried to avoid a lot of wheat and breads, but once in a while I feel like I really want something, so then I go for gluten-free. So this is some gluten-free bread that I bought at the grocery store, and I just put an ounce of low calorie cream cheese on there, some fresh tomatoes, and then I sprinkled some herbs, seasonings, salt and pepper, and then I just did a green salad with a hard boiled egg and I put some seasonings, some of my favorite flavored vinegars and oils. When you're looking for vinegars, try to find vinegars that have zero sodium in them because you're already putting salt on your salad usually, so you just don't wanna overdo it. All of my vinegars don't have sodium in them. Anyways, that's what I'm having for lunch today. These are the type of meals that I've been having throughout the week and I've been losing one to two pounds a day plus I'm never hungry I feel like I have a lot of energy so this is what works for me okay so let me tell you about this dip it is so good and I just created it the other day um, I do all kinds of different dipping sauces but I've really really enjoyed this one it needs to be stirred but Anyways, I took the Greek yogurt and then I added some olive oil and then I put in some dill, some Redmond salt, cracked pepper, garlic, and shredded Parmesan cheese. That's it. And I whipped that together and we've been using this as a dip for all of our vegetables this week. It is so good, you guys. And because it's the Fahe yogurt, it has the natural probiotics in there, so it's a win-win. And this is the daily schedule that I've created for myself because I have learned about myself that if I don't stick to a schedule, then I forget and I totally get out of habit. So I start the morning off with walking. I have a park that I love to walk at. It's not always at the same time every day, but typically it's in the morning. I always start off with a glass of water at least by nine o'clock, usually before then, and I just drink water all throughout the day. I drink my green water. And then I follow a similar snack schedule to the kids, and so I just eat these snacks and proteins all throughout the day. And then in the evening, I have a protein shake, just a small eight ounce one, and it totally satisfies me, it completely fills me up. Then I do a little bit of muscle training, and then I go to bed. And I try to get to bed by a decent time, which for me is before 11. And then these are just ideas that I put on my list to remind me of different and fun things I can make each day just to change it up. So I'll quickly glance at this and then decide what we're going to have for dinner that night. And then of course I have my healthy dessert options and my healthy carb options so that I always feel like I have a lot of options. If I feel restricted, then I feel like I'm lacking and if I feel like I'm lacking, I don't always do so well. I feel like I'm missing out. This way I feel like I am getting everything that I need and I'm enjoying it. These are foods that taste good and I really, really like. All right, so a lot of people have asked me what green water is because I shared on Facebook that part of my plan is I drink green water all throughout the day. So I just take a water bottle, drink container, whatnot, and I fill it up with water. This is gonna look pretty gross because it's leaked a few times, but you can just buy this at your local health food store. There's lots of different brands. It's just chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green stuff that's in plants. It's what makes our plants green. And this is really good for your body. It's really good for alkalizing your body because if you have too much acid in your diet, you're gonna have lots of skin problems, you're gonna break out with acne, you're gonna get heartburn, you're just not gonna feel good. So this really helps alkalize your body, um, it's refreshing, it tastes good, I love it. It's a more fun and creative way to drink your water. So I just go ahead and I put a few drops of that in there. Give it a little swirl, a little shake. Try not to get it all over your hands. <laughs> and then go ahead and drink. So good. So I take this with me everywhere I go. If I have to leave the house, it's going with me in the car. <laughs> so that I have water all day long. And that also helps me to not feel so hungry. Oftentimes when you're feeling hungry, it's usually because you're dehydrated and your body just wants some water. And then of course, we have our fresh fruit and our nuts. This is a great snack for when the kids come home from school. All right, so before I end this video today, I'm gonna leave with a tip. Something that I love to put on my food that not only adds a kick, 
but it sort of curbs your appetite is hot sauce. Now I usually have tons of different kinds of hot sauces, but we're down to just a few bottles, so I have to go get some more. But I love putting hot sauce on my hard boiled eggs, on some cheese, I'll drizzle some over my dips. Something about that spicy kick just curbs my appetite, so I don't wanna eat as much. And who doesn't love a little bit of heat, right? <laughs> Anyways, you guys, thanks for letting me show you my fridge today. I hope you enjoyed some of those tips, ideas, and recipes. If you try them out, I'd love to hear from you. Next time, I'll share some more ideas with you, and I think I'll even show you my laundry room. <laughs> we created a system last year so that our laundry would never pile up, and it works. So I'll show you that next time. Anyways, have a great day, you guys.